The Soul series is known for its incredibly challenging boss fights, but sometimes these fights aren't difficult at all. That's why today I wanted to talk about the easiest boss in each Souls game from Demon Souls all the way to Elden Ring. And because there are so many to choose from, I brought a friend along to give some extra input. Hey everyone, glad to be here. And to kick things off, I'll let Ember take the lead. Starting with Demon Souls, my choice for the easiest boss is the Adjudicator. A lot of the boss difficulty in Demon Souls depends on which order you progress the Archstones, but I think the Adjudicator is the easiest no matter when you face him. I will say the gimmick of hitting his wound might seem obvious to us all now, but it actually took me a bit to figure this out on my first playthrough because it took a while for him to fall down. But once you figure out the trick, he's pretty much a cakewalk with his incredibly slow telegraphed attacks and bird on his head that practically screams hit me. And as a bonus, you can always just sit up top and shoot his head with a bow like pretty much every other boss in this game. Seriously, if you get the lava bow, you'll start contemplating why this game was ever considered difficult at all. The adjudicator is super easy no matter what level I'm at, so I'm gonna give him my top spot spot for the easiest boss in Demon Souls. But let's hear what V-Limit thinks. I think this was the hardest choice for me just because of how many bosses in Demon Souls are a complete breeze to beat. But if I had to pick one, I think the first real boss, the Phalanx, has to be the winner. It follows the classic fight off the underlings while the boss approaches formula, but that strategy doesn't work so well when they move slower than the actual slugs found in later areas. They also deal so little damage that I think as long as you have enough grass on hand, you're never in any real danger unless you somehow get surrounded. On top of that, the game gives you so many firebombs that it's practically begging you to commit virtual war crimes against this thing. I could see this maybe catching new players off guard, but if you've ever played a Souls game before, this shouldn't really give you too much trouble. Moving on to Dark Souls, I think my choice is a bit situational, but I'm gonna go with Pinwheel. I understand that he was meant for early game, but who's making it through the catacombs before killing any other bosses? The run to get to him is harder than the boss itself. Those bone wheel skeletons do not mess around. I honestly don't have much to say about this one because I've killed him before I could see any of his attacks every single time I played Dark Souls. I really like the part where he stares at you and does nothing while you beat his face in for 12 seconds. I will admit his cloning move does seem like it could be difficult, but he has such little health that it doesn't really matter what he does, you'll just end up breezing through before you even notice. Even if he does hit you, his attacks do such little damage, it doesn't really seem to matter anyway. His clones disappear if you hit them once, which is nice, and it could be semi-difficult like the Crystal Sage if any of them ever decided to actually attack you. Not to say the Crystal Sage is very difficult either, but you know what I mean. Every time I fought Pinwheel, I've run straight at him and spammed R1 until he was gone. Time for the Tomb of Giants. But seriously, if I were playing the game the way it was apparently intended and went to the catacombs earlier, I think I'd go with another boss. And that's why I went with the Moonlight Butterfly. Unlike Pinwheel, this thing is found almost right next to a bonfire, and I don't think it's even possible to be underleveled for this fight just because of how weak it is. I'll give it bonus points for intimidation, since it's huge, shoots magic lasers, and flies out of reach for most of the fight, but after a little bit it decides to take a nap and let you erase half of its health pool for free. This fight is even easier if you happen to have a ranged weapon, and you even have the option to summon a wizard that kills the boss in only 4 hits if you need it. The butterfly can sometimes deal a lot of damage at once, but as long as you time your rolls or use a decent shield, it ends up not posing much of a threat. Though, I will say that the weapon it gives you is pretty cool. Next up, we have Dark Souls 2. We came to an agreement on this one with the Covetous Demon as the easiest boss in this game. With incredible bosses like the Fume Knight and Sir Alone in this game, I don't understand how the Covetous Demon made the final cut. I feel like I have to make a genuine effort to even make this guy try to attack me. From what I do know, he does make sense from a lore standpoint, but man, they could have given him more health or attacks or something. They could have at least given him damage with his tail like Madeir to make it a little bit more difficult. I do think the move where you can unequip all of your armor and weapons is a really cool idea, but I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of people will never know it exists due to how easy he is. I didn't even know it existed until I saw it in Dmod's video a while back. I can almost picture the conversation that happened while designing this boss. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had a boss that steals your items? This sounds really strong on paper, so we have to either tie it to an easily avoidable attack, or balance the boss around beating it with nothing but your bare hands. It seems like they went with both of these solutions, resulting in one of the easiest bosses in the entire series. It doesn't even actually steal your items, it just puts them right back in your inventory, letting you re-equip everything while it tries to slowly flop its way back over to you. Overall, I think the Covetous Demon could have been a lot more fun in theory with some more health and different attacks, but he feels a bit slapped together, resulting in him being my choice for the easiest boss in Dark Souls 2. Moving on to Bloodborne, V-Limit and I came to an agreement here as well with the Witches of Hemwick. I'm sure this isn't a surprise to anyone, the hardest part about this fight is hiding your disappointment when 
realizing it's a gimmick. Running around the arena looking for invisible witches with basic enemies walking around really isn't the most difficult thing in the world, especially when neither of them really attack you in the first place. The enemies pretty much ignore you the entire time for the most part, and I think if they were a little more aggressive, this boss might have been more interesting, but I mean, the boss run is harder than the fight. On top of that, I think once you realize the gimmick, the fight is just kind of boring overall, which tends to be a trend with the easier bosses in this series. I think the worst part about this fight is that just like how the Phalanx was weak to fire and Demon Souls, they gave a massive weakness to something that already isn't much of a threat. If you manage to drop down to zero in sight, the enemies that the witches can summon will disappear entirely. Now the boss is almost completely unable to fight back. I tried this strategy once because I thought it would be funny, but honestly, it just kind of made me feel like a bad person. Next up, we have Dark Souls 3. While I'm tempted to put Yorm here to make it more interesting, I think I gotta give it to good old Udex. It's hard to give these bosses rankings after beating these games multiple times because on my first playthrough, Udex gave me a ton of trouble and the Deacons were by far the easiest. But after playing through this game dozens of times, Udex is just so easy, I don't even have to think about it. And the curse attack with the Deacons gets me sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, if you're underleveled, oof. Yorm only gets points for the puzzle of actually figuring out that you have to use the storm ruler, which 20 IQ Ember took like three hours to figure out in his first playthrough. He also hits like a truck. Udex, on the other hand, is definitely one of the best tutorial bosses in the series because he's tough for a new player, but just the right amount of challenge for them to learn to overcome. That being said, as an experienced Souls player, I now destroy him immediately unless I'm going for parries to impress random strangers on the internet. I don't know, something about the second phase of Udex always brings me down to my last Estus while the camera struggles to show what's even happening. I think my vote actually goes to the Ancient Wyvern. I didn't realize what this boss's gimmick was at first, so I'll admit that I died way more than I should have on my first playthrough. Once I figured out you're supposed to follow the path to the side, everything else ends up being pretty simple. Run past the enemies, take cover when necessary, and just keep on climbing upward. At this point, I was ready for a plunging attack to start phase two, and... Oh, there is no phase two. It's already dead. Next up, we have Sekiro. But it's not a Souls game. Shut up. The easiest actual boss for me now is probably Genichiro, but I think the folding screen monkeys have to take this one. While I think the puzzle can be difficult, it's not like there's any real direct threat while you're trying to figure it out, so I can't really count that as difficulty. On top of that, there's a billion ways to cheese this fight and end it quicker on subsequent playthroughs in case you don't feel like doing it again. I do think they executed this fight very well, but this is probably still my least favorite boss in the game because, hey, get back here. The the gimmick is clever and was fun to figure out in my first playthrough, I just don't think it posed much of a challenge. My choice was the Great Serpent, but this one is kind of stretching the definition of a boss fight. It's more like a bunch of stealth sequences, but I think you'll agree it counts at least a little bit more than the Miss Noble does. It's kind of like the Ancient Wyvern in that you mostly just have to get from point A to point B, except instead of dodging fireballs, you just need to stand still long enough for Elden Ring DLC to come out. I'm not the most patient person, so I did get caught a few times on my first run, but the Serpent follows a pretty simple pattern that ultimately should be easy enough to follow. Another thing it shares with the Ancient Wyvern is that you kill it with a plunging attack, but the animation is so much cooler in this game than it was in Dark Souls 3. And finally, we have Elden Ring. Obviously, there are a million bosses that you can kill easier than a regular enemy, so we're only going to be choosing based on the main 12 bosses here. Also, after my last video, a lot of people were asking me how I grew my YouTube channel so quickly, so I made a little guide for you all that you can get at the link in the pinned comment. It's free, don't worry. Anyway, for me, I think I'd go with Renala as the hardest main boss in Elden Ring. I will say the last time I fought her, she was harder than I remembered, but still easier than all the other main bosses in my opinion. The first phase starts off with the classic FromSoft formula of where's Waldo if you murdered Waldo the second you found him. But it's incredibly easy to figure out which which one to take out as opposed to something like the Fool's Idol from Demon Souls or the Deacons of the Deep from Dark Souls 3. Dodging all the spells coming at you isn't too hard either since there are glorious pillars to hide behind that for some reason every YouTuber is obsessed with. In the second phase, the only thing you really have to worry about in my opinion is her summoning, which I must have killed her before she could even do in my first playthrough. Or maybe she only summoned the wolves, I don't remember. But dodging her spells is not hard at all and she has super low poise, so if you make it over to her, you shouldn't have much trouble getting a ton of hits in all at once. She's probably the hardest boss of this list so far in my opinion, but we still have one more to hear about. I want to talk about the Godfrey fight. Not that one. This one. This fight was really disappointing to me just because so many item descriptions talk about Godfrey being this unstoppable warrior, but then this boss ends up having five total moves it can use. No extra phases, no other enemies, just the same five attacks. He does have the unique trait of being immune to almost all status conditions, except sleep for some reason. 
but that's offset by him having less health than a single god skin. In fact, now that I think about it, fighting two god freeze at the same time might be easier than the god skin duo fight. No, don't give him any ideas. Though, I have to say that the real god free fight later in the game definitely made up for that initial disappointment. And to wrap things up, Ember has offered to let me do the outro. I just want to say thank you for